everybody. This is uh, Russ and I am with rwgresearch.com. Go check it out if you want, rwgresearch.com and you'll know everything you need to know about me. Um, <clears throat> so I thought I would uh, just kind of document this adventure that I'll be having uh, this next couple of days and uh, it might actually help some people and uh, I thought I'd post it up there. So what I'm probably going to be doing in the next couple of days is replacing the head gaskets on a 97 Ford Taurus. This has a 3.0 liter overhead valve engine and um, I'll tell you a couple of the symptoms that I had to uh, determine what I have and we'll go from there. Um, the first thing that I had, the uh, cap blew off the radiator or the coolant system right here and uh, all the coolant came out, um, tried to figure out what happened and um, got to look in, looks like the water pump on these engines like to rust out. I do have really nasty brown uh, water and stuff, so that was probably the part of the problem. Replaced the, ra uh, the wa uh, water pump, and I also replaced the thermostat. And uh, neither one of those fixed my problem. Um, the second thing that happened was uh, when I was driving it around, the cap actually came completely off. A lot of the fluid came out, and uh, the engine started knocking because it got really hot. So um, basically what I'm thinking is that it's got a blown head gasket, and the air is being forced into the coolant side, pushing out and overpressurizing my uh, my coolant side. So those are the things I did. Those are the symptoms that I had. And um, I'm going to go ahead and take the spark plugs out and see if I can see any water on any of the spark plugs first before I get too far. And I may do a few more troubleshooting things before I start tearing it apart. But I wanted to give you an overview of what I did and what it looks like right now. And this will be good documentation for myself get a good overview of where all the hoses are and the connectors and where everything's supposed to be at. Um, I went ahead and took the hood off sitting over there and um, got that out of the way so I can actually work on this engine. And uh, like I said, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the spark plugs out, see if I can see anything that's fouled or any water on my spark plug. I did run it just for a minute or two to get it in the garage here, um, but other than that, this engine's cold. It's barely warm to the touch on the exhaust, so it just ran for a minute or two. You can see how nasty this brown stuff is here. That's that's the coolant. That's new coolant. I just put that in, so I really need to chemically flush it out. Um, but there you go. I did, like I said, replace the water pump, and that did not fix the problem. So I think I got a, I think I got a good enough overview view for myself here and uh, we'll see what happens. So like I said I'm just documenting this for uh, fun and it might actually help some other viewers some of you out there maybe coming into the same problem and uh, I haven't found any information on it really so thought I'd share that with you and here we go. Uh, today is July 21st 2012 and uh, it's about 8:30 in the morning. I will be actually doing this whole entire thing broadcasting it live and uh, you can find that out on my website. So uh, I might tag that footage on the end of this uh, demo video and we'll see what happens. So see you in a little bit. Alright guys, I got uh, four of the six out but before this one dries I wanted to show you what it looked like. I wanted to show you that there is water and or liquid. You see it right there. I know it's not the best to see. You can see how wet it is. Um, that's uh, antifreeze. So, looks like I found the problem, and it looks like it is going to be probably a head gasket, which is a good thing. That's this back plug right there. I'm going to go ahead and take the other two out and then make sure they're not wet too. Maybe leaking between multiple cylinders. So, there you go. Alright everybody, so I went ahead and just set these up here as they came out of the engine. You can see, this might not be the best lighting, but you can see they're all pretty dry. This one even has got a whole lot of junk on it. Build up carbon and stuff. But you can see that this one right here is wet. So I'm going to give that about a 99.9% .9 chance that is my cylinder and that is my problem so I am going to go ahead and tear this engine apart that was one of the things I wanted to do now the thing you can do my buddy Scott was telling me that if you set this if you found out which cylinder it was by the spark plug or even if you didn't 
if you took a plug, plug that hole with a port on it where you could compress air into that cylinder, you set this at top dead center where both valves are closed, you could push air through there and you should be able to open this cap and you should be able to see the uh, coolant bubbling. Okay, If you can see it bubbling or the water flows over, you know you have the right problem, you know what the problem is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's my problem because of the uh, spark plug being as wet as it is. So, guess we'll tear this thing down. See how it goes. One Let's thing I wanted started. to inform you of was I did write down the spark plug wiring diagram Okay, before I took anything apart. And this way when I go to put it back together I know I have it correct. So you might want to do that. Be a wise choice. All right, so I just took the belt off, but I wanted to uh, share something with you. These gears are plastic on this particular car. And as you can see from my last experience, I took a big chunk out of this one. And the water pump here actually has a real big chunk taken out of it because I did not realize this was plastic. So that pulley right down there is your idler, or not your idler, but your tensioner. And what I did, took a piece of metal like this, put it right on there and just sprung it up like that okay and popped my belt off so save a little time I had a big issue with that first time I did the water pump so that's the easiest way I found to get that one off so while I'm starting to tear this part I'm going ahead and draining the water antifreeze coolant and uh, you can see how nasty it is that's fresh coolant too so we'll, dr we'll drain that while I'm taking some stuff apart, and uh, that'll be ready to go. It won't leak all over the floor. All right, so I went ahead and removed the alternator. Uh, make sure when you pull these plugs off, you don't break the clips, and make sure you unclip them before you take them off. Now, earlier I did take the battery out. I don't recommend sitting on the concrete. Concrete and batteries don't mix. Set it on the shelf there, and. Uh, alternators here. I kind of got some of the bolts sitting back in the place where they originally went so I don't lose them. If you can, you can put them back in the bolt spot, but for instance on this one, you can't do it because there's a bolt under it. So, just a little tip. Alright, so I basically just started disassembling, um, taking pictures along the way, pulling off parts, plugs, hoses, um, all these electrical plugs. I did take off the uh, distributor here. Um, took off the hoses for the water, coolant, um, really that's about it. I am uh, trying to nicely place everything on this table so that I uh, will be able to put it back together. Things such as these bolts, as long as this table doesn't get knocked over, by the way I know which bolts went where. Um, other than that, just uh, continuing on and uh, see where it takes us. All right, so I got, I got uh, the top of this thing off. The intake, I guess that's the top half of the intake manifold off. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like. You can smell the gas. But uh, we got that off, and uh, I left a lot of this assembly on here. I didn't take any of this stuff off. And uh, left it on there. That would be a little bit easier to put back together. So, continuing on. All right, so I've uh, <clears throat> taken some more of the wire harness out and I uh, went ahead and pulled the injectors out and uh, they're on flexible hosing on this side so I went ahead and just left the injectors in the manifold side in the gas manifold side otherwise you'll have gas everywhere and I'll just set this up here out of the way and uh, that way I ain't got to mess with those at all so that'll be nice otherwise you have gas leaking everywhere and stuff so that's what I did it seemed to work pretty good moving on
Alright, so I got the wiring harness disconnected. This was connected to the uh, firewall up there. And uh, some of these plugs, including, let's see, this one, where's that? Well, I don't quite know where it went. Oh, there. Had this on it. Went down to the bottom. This one right here. Sorry about the bad footage. This long one went down to the bottom of the car. And, uh, there we go. Went all the way down to the bottom, way down there. Really hard to get to. And then the one that really gave me a fit goes down here to the uh, uh, power steering. Or it might be, uh, yeah, it looks like the air conditioner or power steering. Uh, it has to be air conditioner. Went way down there in the bottom. and was very hard to get out. It had a, uh, a clip on it on the bottom side. So those two I fought with for a little bit. That was about the... Uh, worst two that I found then I can just take this whole harness and uh, get it out of my way continue on all right all right so I've pulled off the uh, valve covers and uh, this particular part right here there's the two valve covers, but the particular part right here where the, uh, I guess the bottom half, the intake manifold and the, uh, the actual head um, cover uh, or the can, whatever it's called uh, right here, there's a little bitty like gap, and it looks like they had put some silicone or the black, whatever it is, the sealant I'll probably have to get some looks like there's a little bit of a difference here and uh Looks like they did have some sealant on there, so I'm going to have to remember and put some back on there. Make sure I get that back on there. So just a note for those of you. And, uh, this looks pretty oily. I don't, I don't really see any coolant in that area. So, I'll take it down even further. See what it looks like. Alright, so I've unbolted the exhaust and I'm going to try something without unbolting the manifold to the pipe. It's loose enough that I think I can just pull it away to get this thing put together and taken apart. Now, that's great for the front, but for the back, I took all the bolts out and this one right here didn't even have a head on it. It broke flush. So the manifold's still loose. And if that's the case, if I can still get the head off, and then I can take the bolt out afterwards, I'll be okay. Otherwise, I'm going to have to take this whole thing off. But uh, this here, I just turned it out of my way, and uh, hopefully I can just tighten it back up and it's in the right spot. And uh, it looks like, to get these heads off, well, first of all, I don't have this Torx tool I need for this. So I'm going to have to improvise and or see what I got laying around. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out something for that, but second, the rockers here are going to have to come out because my head bolt is right between these rockers. So that's going to be an issue. Um, I'm going to have to take every one of them out and lay them out on the table real nice. Um, here's the head bolts and one side of the exhaust manifold gasket. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And I'm going to take them rockers off. Um, I guess I'll just take them all off. I'll lay them out here on the table, and that way they don't get lost or mixed up. Make sure I get them back right in the right spot. 
All right, continuing on. Alrighty, so I removed the rockers, and uh, this is what it looks like. And uh, yeah, it looks like this. I've laid them out here nicely. Basically, there's just a uh, pusher and a rocker. And I've got them all laid out here nicely, in order, front, back. I know right where they go. And it sounds like the cops are coming for me, a helicopter's flying over me. <laughs> All right, so I've got the bolts out. I uh, do not have the proper uh, uh, whatever you call it. I can't think right now. I don't have the proper tool to take that out. But what I did is I used a uh, Allen wrench that fits snugly in there just to break them loose. And then when I retighten these things, of course, I will have to actually use the proper tools, but uh, this looks like a good spot. Let me see if we can pop this thing off. There we go. Looks like it's already loose. Let's see if we can pull it off here. Oh, a little antifreeze coming out there. That's fine. That came off fairly easy. Go ahead and set that out of my way. And uh, I kind of turned that upside down there. Some of the junk fell off. That's probably a bad deal. But I'll clean this out anyway. So that's what she looks like. You can see already this is why I need a chemical flush. This is the uh, the junk right there. That's on the antifreeze. Man, that is some nasty stuff. Look at that. So, that's part of the antifreeze problem that I was having and uh, looks like looks like a chemical flush is going to be a good idea. How thick that stuff is. Man, bad deal there. Um, so let's go ahead and take the heads off and hopefully we can get these heads off without uh, uh, without that bolt there messing us up. I think we can slide this out and I can get that bolt out later. So, that'll be the next step. Let's have at it. Okay, so I've got all the head bolts out. They are sitting right there. I'm not going to be reusing them. I did purchase new ones. I'll give you the part numbers in a minute for this engine. But what I wanted to show you was there was a bolt right here that had a nut on it that held, that held this on. Okay, so I undid the bolt or the nut, but the bolt was still in there. I was able to grab it and pull and untwist it. This one, unfortunately, is not able to come off. So, I'm going to have to see what I can do about getting around that. I might be able to take this loose and kind of pull it over. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and pull that head off. And uh, again, let's see if I can do it with that kind of being broke. With that other uh, bolt being broke. And uh, I'm going to pull this seal off first. Set it over here for now. Might need to pry on that one a little bit. A little bit more than that other one. There we go. Okay. I just thought of something. I think there's pins, set pins, possibly in these heads. So I might not be able to get this off without taking the whole thing apart. The exhaust might need to come off after all. We'll have to see here in a sec. At least this one, because I got that broken bolt. Oh, I might be able to get it after all. Let's just 
just barely stuck on that bolt. So I can just pry it out. There we go. And the verdict is. I don't know yet. Let's go set it over here and find out. Okay. Let's see what we got. Yep. Um, the head gasket is still on the other side, but there's water in my cylinder. There's actually antifreeze in the cylinder, so that is a clear indication of a blown head gasket. See how dry those two are. So let's uh. Let's do some investigative work. We'll let my wife hold the camera. Let's inspect this. You think you can hold the camera? Oh, you got me a frosty. You're so sweet. You hold that. And uh, let's take this flashlight. Thank you. I'm gonna take a bite of my frosty. Shine that over here. Where? Right here. Right here. Let's see. Looks like the gasket. It's not on this side either. It must be on the other side. That's the that's a steel head. I thought these were aluminum. That looks like steel to me. You can see all that residue. Can you see that real good? See all that water? Antifreeze. You can see it looks like it ran down right here. So let's check the head gasket. That should be still on here, I guess. Yeah, the gasket's still on here. So, right there. Can you zoom in on that? I can't even reach it. Can you see it? Move it. Just go close. Right I don't here. Know where. Right in this area. There you go. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see this spot right here little piece looks like it's passed that might be our culprit looks like it's made a freeze right in here so that's what uh, what it looks like <laughs> can you see anything yep right there take a good look at that you're pointing down here. I, I can't tell where I'm Turn pointing. that. Loosen it up. Turn it. Keep turning. There you go. So it's hard to see. Um, up here. There you go. But uh, right there. You can see how it's peeling. That looks like the looks like the culprit right there it gave out. So now we know. I do indeed have a blown head gasket. And uh, it's time to do some measuring, looking, and checking. Let's we'll see if we can get this other head off. All right, so this whole bracket had another bolt under it. I had to take the uh, tension pulley off and had another one of them type of nuts, bolts. And uh, I was able to get that off, break it loose with my Allen wrench again instead of using the Torx. And it uh, looks like that's going to slide off and then I can get that bolt out afterwards or I can just leave it in there. So well, let's pull this one off real quick. If I can get my camera angled. There you go. So now I should be able to pull this out enough to get it off there. It's still sitting. Okay. There we go. 
set this one over here too and take a look at it. Oh, it looks like it's got a little oil, but no signs of antifreeze anywhere, which is wonderful. That's what I like to see. A little bit of antifreeze actually around the outside of this cylinder. But, uh, you know, let's see, I just pulled the head gasket out. Let's see what that looks like. Wipe my hands off here and I'll set the camera on this side. Let's see what it looks like. This side of it looks pretty good. There is... Looks just like oil. Not too much else in there. Yep, look at that. Well, it may have just broke, but it looks like these two cylinders could have been leaking. And these two cylinders, well, there's still a little on here. Maybe not. Maybe not. Hard to tell, but uh, it's hard to tell because some of it broke off. May have had a little leak. But definitely, definitely, they said the head gasket was busted. Yeah. All right. Well, I have officially disassembled this engine to the point where I can replace the heads. So we'll do some checking with the heads once I try to figure that one out. I'll let you know. I'm gonna have to clean them good first and make sure they're accurate. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty uh, pretty excited about learning the. Uh, learn how to do this and what the problem is and uh, cool beans I think this antifreeze I'm seeing may have been from pulling this off because when I pulled it off earlier a lot of antifreeze ran out so there you go V6 3.0 overhead valve engine disassembled to the point where I can get the head gaskets replaced now it's time for some cleanup check and guess and uh, time for a little grill out all right, awesome. All right, so I've gotten to the point where I can turn these and feel uh, if it's rough or smooth or if it turns well or not. And uh, it turns really free. None of the walls look scraped. And everything looks really good. All the pushers look good, I guess. That's what they're called, I can't remember now. These over here aren't even pushing, they're all the way up. Just like that, there we go. So, everything looks really good. Um, that cylinder is definitely still wet, and uh, I need to double check the oil and make sure there's no coolant in it for, for sure. Probably drain it and change it. We just changed it, but I'll change it again anyway. Uh, other than that, the heads here don't look too bad as far as carbon buildup is. So we'll do some checking and I gotta get some tools to check that. See what they look like, see if they're square. Now these are steel. I don't know why I thought these were aluminum, but they're steel. So uh, I don't know. We'll see.
All right, so it's a new day, and as you can see, I've really nicely cleaned, and uh, I did take some 100 grit sandpaper on a smooth block and uh, smooth that up just a little. Didn't go too crazy with it. I just kind of wanted to get the surface stuff off and kind of uh, make it look a little better. Try to smooth out just a little. So there's that. I did the same thing here to the heads and uh, see what they look like. I did take some cleaner and cleaned everything real good. But um, these look fairly square. I did take a, uh, a feeler gauge here. Took a 5,000 and a uh, straight edge. Checked it along all the points and uh, see if we had any warpage. It looks really good. There's a tiny bit of warpage, but uh, I don't think it's enough to worry about <clears throat> from what I understand. So we're going to go ahead and try it and uh, see what happens. Okay, for anyone interested, the gasket set, I'm using Felpro, the number is HS9885PT3. Okay, Felpro. The bolts are part number ES72136. That's the bolt head set. Okay, now. I wanted to share you this real quickly, just to inform you. Here's my notes. Um, so basically, for this car and this engine, the first thing you want to do is look up the torques. These are the torques, and this is the bolt pattern. Okay, so the bolt patterns: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the torque first thing you're going to do is tighten it to 57 foot-pounds then you're going to loosen it for 360 degrees one turn and then you're going to tighten it to 37 foot-pounds and then you're going to tighten it to 68 foot-pounds each time you do it you do it in this order um, so these right here are inch pounds because I'm using a inch pounds torque wrench so I converted them over 708 back off 360 444 816 Okay, and that's how uh, this is done. Now I got the one done, we'll go ahead and do the other one. It went on fairly easy. And uh, I'll go ahead and put the good cam up and we'll time lapse that for fun.
Alright, so I'm about to put the lower intake manifold on and I uh, kind of wanted to show you what I got. Got some ultra black here for setting the uh, four corners. It states to put some Scylla, or some RTV, black RTV in both of the, or all four of the corners. And then I got some quick set epoxy here that I'm supposed to use to, um, these are just sitting in here. I'm supposed to put a little dab on this and let it set up and then once it's set up and doesn't move then I can put the rest of this back on so I want to give you a little demo there of what I'm supposed to be doing and uh, that's per instructions of the kit this is all clean and uh, wiped down ready to go so that's it moving on All right, so all on, everything nice and tight. Uh, that worked out really well. Hopefully everything is sealed and in place correctly. That would be awesome. But I uh, didn't have any troubles. Um, it looks like first you're supposed to tighten it to uh, 230 inch pounds. Second to about 206, 276 inch pounds. I believe that was like between 15 and 20 foot pounds, 20 and 23 foot pounds. And the bolt pattern, one, two, three, four, uh, five, no, five, six, seven, eight. So, one, two, three, four, five, no, five, well, I don't know. Now I'm lost. I lost it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's what I did wrong. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So that's the bolt pattern. And uh, moving on, probably do rockers next. All right. All right, so I got all the rockers on there, and the pusher, uh, whatever these are called. Anyway, uh, I got all those on. That went pretty easy. Specification calls for around 300 inch pounds, and uh, now I'll give you a little demo of them moving if I can here. All right, for anyone who is interested, we're going to turn this crankshaft so you can see the valves move, open and close. Try to stay out of the footage while I do it. So everything looks just fine. Alrighty, so uh, I went ahead and put the exhaust gaskets in. Worked out pretty well. I uh, stuck a big rod in here and kind of pried them out and set them in place. And then I went back and tightened them. I went ahead and tightened them about uh, 140 inch pounds, all of them. And I came back and tightened them down to 200 inch pounds. 
that's what they were calling I think it was 15 to 18 foot pounds so wasn't very tight I was surprised but that's all it takes I guess and uh, moving on to the head uh, head covers bow covers I mean yeah. Alrighty, so I went ahead and uh, cleaned these up and took the bolts out. They came out with the seals. There's two seals in there. So these seals here and uh, they go on the back side and between these bolts. I set these bolts out so I know back, I know where they go. And uh, we'll go ahead and assemble this one and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so I've got this gasket installed, and uh, man, that was kind of a difficult one to be honest. It uh, pressed in there pretty hard, and it's all got to fit just right, and uh, hopefully it'll be just fine. So we'll go ahead and install it, and then I'll clean up the other one. But uh, I'm going to put some sealant there, some RTV. Um, basically, it's where these uh, two points meet and there's a big gap there there's also a little bitty bump down here on the bottom I'll double check and see if I gotta put any there but I know I gotta put some there because when I took it off there was some so we'll go ahead and install one of these and then I'll clean up the other one Alrighty, so went ahead and put the uh, manifolds on. Did put some sealant there where I was supposed to, and uh, turned out well. Everything seemed to work just fine. I did tighten them by hand without my torque wrench because it didn't have the right socket. But uh, this looks like it's set for uh, well 120 right now. I think I was going to crank it down to like 130 or something. Might have been 120. That's probably what I was going to crank it down to. I just did the same pattern like this. Something like that. And uh, same way the rest of it was because there was no specifications that I could find at the moment. Moving on. And I probably put the uh, injectors in and uh, see where we go from there. It looks like I'm getting pretty close to just start slapping stuff back together and uh, see how it comes along. Start the wiring here in a minute probably. Alright, so I uh this kit came with these gaskets and what those were for was the front here of the injectors. Uh, so I went ahead and took those off and put them on and did find out that these feel like they're plastic and they're extremely brittle. Um, on the, these here anyway, maybe not the ones that anybody else are using, but these are very brittle and uh, be very careful if you try to take those off. Um, they did want to crack. So anyway, I did go ahead and clean out these holes a little bit and uh, we'll go ahead and install this back on there. See what it looks like. Okay, so after installing the uh, injectors, I decided that I could not get this giant wiring harness underneath these hoses. So I had to take it back off, 
flipped the wiring harness over and it's just sitting here but I was able to put those on so I'll go ahead and start uh, probably popping in all the uh, plugs I can get on and then uh, after that we'll move on to the uh, upper intake so I'll go ahead and start plugging half this stuff in if I can get to it and uh, show you when I'm done again alright I went ahead and uh, tightened clipped everything this ground wire back here was about the only real problem. Everything else went on real well. Don't forget that one down there and the one up here. A um, few other thing, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a few hoses and stuff that I can fit on now. And then uh, next I'll go ahead and bolt this back on and see where we're at. Come along nicely. All right, uh, during some of the hoses that I put on, I uh, had this on top of this wire harness. This wire harness has been a pain in the butt for me. And I had to pop it off here, luckily, and just pull it under. Went ahead and put this hose on and hose on over there. And then I went ahead and bolted the uh, pump here on. And next I'll be installing the pulley back on here. And uh, I should be able to put both of these pulleys back on. I'll go ahead and definitely put the uh, tensioner and probably that's it for now and I'll go ahead and install the intake manifold off we go it's getting later and later all right so before I put this on I kind of wanted to just show you something I'll just show you how pitted this thing is look at that it's just a bad cast I guess that thing is horrible look at all the junk and spots in there Ford part doesn't tell me where it was made but look at the pitting in just this here and that is terrible anyway thought that was bad I had to show you I'll go ahead and install it now got that cleaned Alright, intake manifold is on. Couldn't find the bolt pattern. I don't know if there even is one. So I just kind of did the same. Like this. And so forth. Um, it does have a torque setting. It's at 240 inch pounds. And it's between like 15 and 22 foot pounds. So I go ahead and put the... Uh, I did have to scrape the uh, gasket off for the uh, EGR valve. I go ahead and put the gasket on and install that. And uh, we can continue on putting a bunch of wires on and hoses on and getting pretty slim on my table here on parts. That's really about all I got. So we'll get it done. Alright, so I went ahead and uh, put the new gasket on, EGR valve, got it on, got the hoses hooked up, <clears throat> got this hooked up to my... Uh, valve cover. Went ahead and put on well, this here and uh, chill out. I went ahead and put this idler pulley back on and go ahead and start plugging in some more wires, hoses and things and uh, really the only thing left I got on my table is this here uh, spark plug wires, a few other little valves and uh, alternator, a few pulleys. So we'll go ahead and put the rest of this stuff on and uh, pretty much show you when it's complete I guess I might show you a little bit more
All right, so it's back together. I got a very few things to do. I did go ahead and put new spark plugs in, and uh, in the process of checking the cables, spark plug ignition cables, found that. And there's one back here you can't see that's also burned. They were sitting against here, burned through. They are probably arcing. Um, for now, I'm going to put some tape on there, but I have to get some new wires. Um, that can be later. It'll uh, it should run for now. Kind of put the belt back on it and uh, put the battery in and put the hood on, and I'll show you when it's complete. But uh, yeah, awesome. All right, well, these shocks don't work, so this is my hood stand. I gotta get some of those, but I'm not really worried about those. Um, there it is, engine back together. The only thing I don't have is the uh, bottom pan, uh, which is right there. I'm gonna wait till I get it all flushed out, cleaned out, and then I'll pop it back on. But uh, it's all back together. So, tomorrow, I'm, we'll start it flush it out and start it and then I'll put some chemical clean in it and clean out the cooling system and uh, should be ready to go hopefully we'll get a lot more out of it it's got about 180,000 miles on it and uh, hopefully we'll get a lot more if the rest of the car didn't fall off <laughs> alrighty it's a new day I've uh, filled it up with water and radiator cleaner and uh, we're gonna fire it up here and uh, See who starts. It does run, but I hear some noise sucking sound. I'm not quite sure if there's a vacuum line off or something, but uh, I hear it. So I'll check it over, see if I can find any vacuum hoses or something, and uh, see what it does from there. All right. All righty, and we're back. I did indeed find a vacuum hose off. So it should run. No problem there. There you go. I'm not quite sure if that hose fell off or I missed it, but it was the one cup way back here and uh, you couldn't see it. And there you go, she's a runner. So I'm going to let her idle for a while and let her run and uh, let's see what happens in a little while. Woo this has been the adventure of rebuilding, or I should say replacing head gaskets in this little old Ford. First got this car. It was the ugliest thing i ever seen. 
but for some reason, it felt like it'd be fun to fix. And uh, looks like we succeeded. So, thanks, enjoy, and uh, hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy the time-lapse video of the uh, live footage. That'll be kind of fun. Peace.